This Birding Adventures episode is powered by Nikon, your world leader in optics since 1917, and Tropical Birding, the leader in bird, wildlife and photography tours. The high altitude Paramo of the Andes in Ecuador is one of the harshest environments on earth. This is a place where harsh winter conditions come every night and on most days. This harsh environment means hardy birds, birds like Canasteros, Synclodes, and Thistletails. On this episode, we're going in quest of a bizarre wader of this upper elevation paramo called the Seed Slipe. Let's go birding. Let's do it. I'm keen. Let's go. Yes. How awesome is that? Oh, yes. Let's get a closer look. I'm standing at Media del Mundo, or the middle of the world. This is the exact location where the equator bisects Ecuador. We're going to be heading up to 14,000 feet with the guides from Tropical Birding to look for caranculated caracaras and seed snipe. Right now we're at about 9,000 feet, so we've got to go an additional 5,000 feet up. I think it's going to be a strain on the old lungs, but let's go birding. The Andes mountain range extends right from Venezuela through Colombia and all the way south down to Chile. This 4,000 mile long mountain range holds some spectacular bird species at altitude. The formation of these high Andes is an interesting one. The Pacific plate subducted underneath the South American plate and basically pushed up these Andean mountain ranges. In Ecuador, it's in two corridors or ridges separated by about 40 to 50 kilometers between the two ridges. What a lot of people don't realize is that Paramo, both dry and wet, is not a continuous ecosystem but rather islands of habitat separated by valleys of cloud forest. Basically what happens is you've got a volcanic peak over here, another volcanic peak over here, and another volcanic peak over here. And on the other ridge, you've got a volcanic peak here, a volcanic peak here, and a volcanic peak here. This peak might be dry paramo, this one might be wet paramo, this might be wet, that might be dry, that might be dry, that might be wet. And with these islands of habitat comes increased specification of birds. This young man is the shortest of the tropical birding guide and he's going to take us to see some of the special birds of the High Paramo. Gabrielle, what are we going to be looking for? For the Andean lapwing, the Andean condor, and the Andean ibis. Awesome! Let's, Let's go, go birding. birding. This lake is called La Mica and is typical of the High Andean lakes. This also happens to be the best spot in Ecuador to look for silvery grebe, a bird which was nearly threatened with extinction in Ecuador. I'm looking at a silvery grebe right now through my edge field scope and you can see the bird has got this characteristically bright white underparts, silvery patterning on the wings and on the crown and a bright red eye. An awesome little bird of the high Andean lakes, the silvery grebe. Also to be found here are Andean coots and of course there are caranculated caracaras around here and the scenery, well, it speaks for itself. It's just absolutely magnificent. James, Andean condor flying west above the hut. Oh yeah, got it. Andean condor just hovering 
dead still in the wind above the lake here. This is an adult bird. You can see the beautiful white patterning on the back, the white around the nape of the neck. What a stunning, stunning bird. Andean condor right here at La Mica Lake in the high Andean Paramo. There he goes, sallying off. See, it's a beautiful soaring flight. Condors need a lot of wind to get themselves airborne. They're very large birds. And you can see we've got these blustery conditions right now. And this wind will kind of updraft against the mountainous regions here and provide these great, great thermals for these Andean condors to soar on and survey the landscape for any dead animals. We're here in the dry paramo of Antisana. This is a place at about 12,000 feet, and we're going to be looking for caranculated caracaras and birds like black-faced ibis and some other great birds of this paramo region. At altitude, it always helps to have your coca tea. Coca tea really does help you acclimatize to the altitude. Let's go birding. <laughs> A genus of birds endemic to this paramo, both dry paramo and wet paramo, are the Syncloides. And up here in the dry paramo, we get two different species, the stout-billed Syncloides and the bar-winged Syncloides. Quite difficult to tell the two apart. The stout-billed has got a much stouter bill and the bar-winged is a slightly more slender bird. The interesting thing about these birds is that they are fernerids. And when we think of fernerids, we think of wood creepers and arboreal birds. But these particular birds have adapted to a terrestrial lifestyle. These Syncloides nest in banks, like this bank right below me here, in the holes in these banks where they'll bring up their brood and carry on their lifestyle. This is a very hardy bird of high altitude paramo, the Syncloides genus. Other high altitude birds you don't want to miss in Ecuador include Andean teal, the ubiquitous Andean gulls, Andean lapwings, Paramo ground tyrants, the tiny Plumbia sierra finches, and the white chin thistletail. A bird that we were really hoping to see was the black faced or Andean ibis, and after stopping to look at some Andean lapwings and Andean gulls, we noticed a group of large birds feeding in the distance, black-faced ibis. If you follow taxonomy that lumps the black-faced ibis with the Andean ibis, the bird does occur outside of Ecuador, in Peru. And there it is a fairly widespread bird, but again, only at high altitude and high elevation. It is still a very good bird to get, even in Peru or in Ecuador. These ibis are amongst the largest species of ibis. They can get to nearly double the size of glossy ibis and white-faced ibis that we might be familiar with in the United States. Black-faced ibis like to forage in small flocks in this open, dry paramo. And you can see their bills are perfectly adapted to probing in this dry paramo and getting the grubs and the nutrition that they need to sustain themselves in this very harsh environment. Black-faced ibis, which some authors split from Andean ibis, is one of the most critically endangered birds in the world. The population of black-faced ibis here at Antisana got to as low as 20 birds. Thankfully now, their numbers have increased to around 100. And we have had stellar and killer views of this critically endangered species. I love the new regional Audubon Guides apps. There's an app for Florida, for Texas, for California, for New England, for the desert southwest and the Pacific Northwest. The great thing about these apps is that you're able to search 10 different categories from plants and trees to butterflies, amphibians and reptiles, birds and mammals. For example, here I am with my son in Florida enjoying the great outdoors, and I want to find out what kind of tree this is above me so that I can teach him about nature. And this is how to do it. 
So I click on my Florida Nature app. It brings up my 10 categories. I click on trees. I browse by family because I know that it's a palm tree that I'm looking at. I then click on the palms. And there it is. The sable palm or cabbage palm. A common tree all the way across South Florida. Available on iTunes for iPhone, iPad and iPod Touch and also on the Android market. This Birding Adventures episode is powered by Nikon, your world leader in optics since 1917, and Tropical Birding, the leader in bird, wildlife and photography tours. Right now we're standing at 12,000 feet elevation, smack on the equator, in a habitat called the Dry Paramo. Now the research on the Dry Paramo, or in Paramo in general, and also Ecuador and the Galapagos, was done by a naturalist called Humboldt. He collected most of his material in the Galapagos, but he did all his research and processing here before he shipped off his research to Germany. And since then, this place has been protected by the Delgado family for many generations on a 200,000 acre private reserve. This is how we roll when we're birding in the high Andes. In place of revolvers, we have our binoculars. I've got my fur on. Ooh, yummy. One of the signature birds of this dry paramo is the Aplomado falcon. It used to be called the lead-colored falcon on account of the lead color on the wings. If we look at the female on the right-hand side here, she's slightly larger, but she's giving us a great view of her lead-colored wings right now. You can see the male is facing us head-on. He's slightly smaller, as is the case in most raptors, and you can see he's got that beautiful orangey breast as well. Aplomado falcons have been recently reintroduced to Texas. And in the northern part of their range, they feed predominantly on insects. Up here in the Paramo, this area does not have a lot of insect life. So these Aplomado falcons feed predominantly on black winged ground doves. The Caranculated Caracara has adapted to living in the high altitude Paramo of Colombia and Ecuador. They are highly opportunistic birds that feed on carrion and virtually any small animal that they can overpower. They are most often seen striding along in family groups of up to eight birds, looking for food in the high paramo. They are the only caracara found at this elevation and have this distinctive and handsome streaked black and white plumage on the breast. We're at Humboldt's cabin on the dry paramo, sampling some traditional Ecuadorian food. Right here we've got tamales de morte, and we're also gonna have the traditional grain soup of the Inca, quinoa soup. This Birding Adventures episode is powered by Nikon, your world leader in optics since 1917, and Tropical Birding, the leader in bird, wildlife, and photography tours. Today we've basically cleaned up in the dry paramo. We've got caranculated caracaras, black-faced ibis, aplomado falcons. We've got both species of syncloides up here. And now we're gonna head to the wet paramo and we're gonna look for our golden bird, the seed snipe. If you want a serious birding challenge, Come and look for seed snipe in the upper reaches of the Paramo in Ecuador. This is a place where eyes water, noses run, lungs burn and muscles ache. Very challenging but at the same time incredibly rewarding because these birds are found nowhere else on earth. The trick when looking for these birds at altitude is actually to walk really slowly, stop every so often and scan and look for these birds with the binoculars because we're at 15,000 feet here and you really don't want to overexert yourself. You've got to take it easy and be responsible at this kind of an altitude, especially if you're not used to it. 
I live in Florida, which is about 10 feet above sea level. So to be at 15,000 feet, certainly my body's not used to it. And it takes a lot of acclimation to get used to this altitude. We've been looking for the seed snipe now for about an hour and a half. We've had no luck. We're gonna keep pressing on. I'm starting to feel the effects now though. This place is harsh, man. It is so high and so cold, but we actually have, believe it or not, a very nice day up here today. You can come up here and it's so foggy, you can't see 10 feet in front of you. So we've got a really bright sunny day, which bodes well for our search for this seed snipe. Having said that, the weather at this altitude can change very quickly. Within five minutes, it can be sunny, and then suddenly it can just cloud over and fog over, and you're in the middle of this incredible fog cloud, and you're struggling to see anything. So we hope that this nice sunny weather holds out. This whole cloak of clouds just kind of gave way, and we had the most magnificent views of the volcanoes here, and the snow-covered peaks, it was so spectacular. If God created the most beautiful places on earth, this is definitely one of them right here. Where else in the world can you view Andean condors, caranculated caracaras, and our golden bird, rufous-bellied seed snipe? We haven't seen this bird yet, but the scenery in itself is enough to blow you away. We've been in Ecuador now for five days and we've shot three shows and this is our last one because we leave in another day but this was really tough because the altitude you start really wheezing I mean it really affects your lungs your whole body and we were hiking all over the mountain and we finally saw this bird come flying over us, we were in the right position, it landed, and then James comes running up. I knew he didn't have a camera, and whenever we separate, something wacky happens. He doesn't bring the camera, or he's out of focus, or he forgets to hit record. It's a nightmare, really, with him as a camera guy. But in this case, he flushed the bird out, came over, bam, got the shot. The only bird we saw all day, and I mean, look around here, this, this place is just awesome, I mean, I love Ecuador and I look forward to coming back here again. Okay, so I've just had one of the most exhilarating birding experiences of my career. We've been trapezing up and down this ridge line at about 15,000 feet looking for seed snipe for about two hours at altitude carrying these really heavy cameras, a lot of equipment, our lungs were aching, our muscles were absolutely burning. It was really, really hard work, totally out of breath. I'd pretty much given up. I go back down to the car and sit in one of these kind of pincushion plants and I'm sitting there just scanning, trying to see a seed snipe and trying to catch my breath at the same time. And I look down and literally six feet from me is a seed snipe sitting right in front of my eyes and I hadn't noticed it all the time. So I'm caught in this quandary because I don't have the camera, I've left it back at the car and I'm sitting there without a camera and Jeff and Jose are up on the slope looking for the seed snipe. So I try to move gingerly off this pincushion plant and of course the bird takes off. Coo, 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 and starts flying in ever increasing and ever widening circles up the slope. But it flies right to where Jeff and Jose are. Jose locates the bird and gets Jeff onto it. This was just absolutely spectacular. Here in the high Andes with Seed Snipe, our golden bird. A very, very tough bird. What an exhilarating mountain experience. The rufous-bellied Seed Snipe is the largest of four species of unique shorebirds that have adapted to living in particularly challenging environments. Unlike other shorebirds, they are herbivores and resemble grouse rather than snipes. But look at the subtly marked patterning on these birds. It has been suggested that seed snipes are most closely related to jacanas and painted snipes. 
but they are so different from other shorebirds that their taxonomy remains unclear. What is clear is that this is a very challenging bird to find. Thanks so much for finding it up there because I kind of saw where it landed, but I was so worried because I wasn't sure you guys had seen it. So I was like screaming, hey, seed snipe, seed snipe. And I saw you give me the thumbs up and I knew, yes, Jess on it, man. That was so awesome. Thanks, buddy. Oh, man. You got good eyes, dude. That was, that was incredible. Wonderful experience.